Clerk will call the roll. Lynn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy Charles Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Andy H. Wynn, Commissioner Precinct 2. Here. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Our invocation today will be delivered by Reverend Lewis Carr from the Harvest United Methodist Church in Arlington. After the invocation, please remain standing for the pledges. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you. May we bow. Oh, gracious and loving God, we come before you just saying thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to serve you publicly. Lord, we ask that your blessings be upon this, the court, that you may be edified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Thank you, Honor. Members of the Court, we have one announcement as it relates to today's agenda, and that's under the County Administrator section, item 8A2, the lease agreement uh, with Hospital District and UNT Health Science. We're going to ask that we hold that for one week. We will bring that back to you next week. Um, also, just one comment, you, you, if you use the electronic book, it's, it has always been in there, but under the budget and risk management, uh, the 2016 appropriation adjustments, we have added a, a copy of uh, a revised adjustments. We just, when we sent out the paper books, we forgot to pick up the back page of that, so you have two pages of that. Um, Your Honor, I might uh, say that next week we intend to take the court into a work session environment to talk about uh, the JPS bond package. So we'll just we'll work with each of you on that and we intend to make a, a, a presentation to you all. And uh, finally, members of court, we have one presentation or, that, uh, that we like to do right now is the purchasing agent, uh, Ms., Mr. Beecham, if you'll come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's our pleasure this morning to uh, bring to the court uh, money, dollars, greenbacks. Uh, this is a chance for us to celebrate our partnership with Staples Office Advantage. Uh, as you know, we have uh, had a, a cooperative purchasing agreement in place for years. Uh, they have been fortunate to, through the bid process to be our office supply provider uh, for furniture and office supplies. Uh, last year, uh, if you remember, this has been a four-year program. Uh, this is the third consecutive year we've been able to bring uh, money to the court in the form of a rebate. Um, Fifty-two entities now share in that rebate process with Tarrant County. That's an increase from last year. Uh, their shared <coughs> rebate dollar amount is over $363,000 among 52 entities. I'll pass out uh, in a moment uh, a breakdown of that, but... Um, um, our increase for Tarrant County uh, was a total of $91,000 from what we were able to bring to the court last year with Staples Advantage. Um, we are appreciative of the partnership. Uh, they worked very hard to service our supplies. 20 years ago, we did not have desktop delivery next day like we do right now. They've done an outstanding job uh, in a partnership with Tarrant County. Um, I'd like to pass this out and ask uh, uh, Dave Gorman and Kathy Hannes to come to the podium and they have something for you. Come on, Dave. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jack, Thank and you. good morning, members of the Commissioner's Court. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today to um, share the results. Um, a lot of good planning went into this program, but it's great to actually measure and deliver results. So today, I'm pleased to report that we have a check here for $311,090 based on the rebate program we put in place. This is certainly 
certainly not accomplished without a tremendous partnership. Support from the court, Jack, Melissa, and the entire purchasing staff, and each and every member of the 52 members that we work with every single day to make this successful. With their payout collectively of $363,000, we're proud to say that $674,000 came back through the Tarrant County program. So thank you. Thank you all again very much for your help in working with us on that. Our pleasure. Great. Thank you. Judge, I'm impressed by the diversity of the entities that participate in our purchasing contract, including uh, several from outside of Tarrant County, including several from Dallas County. It's really a great program, Jack, and uh, I want to compliment you and your folks uh, and Staples on doing and working through this. So thank you all again very much for being here today. I would move that we receive and file this presentation. Second. second. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Just one more comment, a statistic I'd like to share. Uh, if the court remembers, uh, they actually brought a uh, potential 1.5% increase per spend potential category uh, to the entities, and we gave that 1.5% back to the participating entities. That's, that's a big deal, and we've received several compliments from the participating folks thanking our court members uh, through our office for, for, for your generosity. Thanks again. Okay. Um, court members, you have before you the minutes of our regular meeting of February the 16th. Move for approval of the minutes. Second. A motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. <coughs> motion passes <coughs> unanimously. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, I believe you have a proclamation. I do for Tarrant County Junior Livestock Show Days. It comes around every year, and Saturday is the big day. Uh, the show starts earlier this week, I believe Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but the sale is Saturday. For all that participated in our pool to help these kids out, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And, you got GK's uh, check? I actually have GK's check in my pocket. <laughs> Did you need me to help collect on anybody else's commission? <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I was going to have to send somebody to collect from you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we do have a proclamation. If you would read that into the record, please. Whereas the Tarrant County Junior Livestock Show was established in 1950 as an opportunity for youth to exhibit and compete with their livestock and home economic projects in Tarrant County show, and whereas over 100 volunteers continue their tradition with committed service in conducting the show through the Tarrant County Junior Livestock Association show board, comprised of members representing the Fort Worth Farm and Ranch Club, Tarrant County FFA chapters, and Tarrant County 4-H clubs, and, where, and whereas FAA chapters and 4-H clubs provide youth with educational and extracurricular opportunities to develop life skills, leadership, community service, and an appreciation of agriculture. And whereas more than 300 exhibitors will submit nearly 1,400 projects, project entries this year, uh, adding to the thousands of youth who have participated in the 66 year history of this event, which signifies the completion of their projects. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby proclaim March 3rd through 5th, 2016, as Tarrant County Junior Livestock Show Days and encourage all residents to participate in activities at the Will Rogers Complex in support of our county's youth. In witness whereof, we have here to set our hands and cause the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this first day of March, 2016. I move for its approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And I'm not sure if R.L. is here or not. There he is. Okay. But we have R.L. Felt, who is president of the Tarrant County Junior Livestock Show Board, uh, Patton Maynard, representative from 4-H, and Madison Looney, representative from FFA, to accept this plaque. So if you folks would meet me down at the podium, please. <coughs> Thank you. Thank 
y'all very much for being here. Thank you. And if y'all will smile for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> We do. <laughs> <laughs> <Two commission. laughs> That's hard for JD to do. All right, and any comments y'all would like to make, and I will see you Saturday. Yes. Thank you, thank you. God willing. Right. With GK's money. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the show this year, to add a, to a little bit of what J.D. said, uh, it is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday is weigh in and set up, and then we do our, our chicken show. And then Friday is the actual show of all of the animals, and then Saturday is the premium sale. And this year we have 581 exhibitors and 1,296 exhibits. Wow. So we're up a little bit. Uh, about 5% from, from last year. So we just kind of keep the growing. When we have a barn full, this year we're adding a, uh, trying a new event. Saturday morning, I believe it starts at 9, we're doing a little show for the special needs children. We're going to have, this year we're starting off with like 35 to see if we can make this work. And we're going to do it over in the arena in the sheep barn. And there'll be... Uh, sheep, goats, and rabbits is what we're going to try this year and see how all that works. And we've got all of that sponsored, and we're pretty excited about this little event. Like, I needed something else to do, but it should, it <laughs> should, be, a, should be a lot of fun. And I appreciate all of your help and everything, and, and we'll see you all this weekend. R.L., how many items do we have for the sale? Do you know yet? Uh, no, we, we won't know that till till Saturday morning. Okay. That just... The one big thing that's up this year, and they don't even go to the sale, uh, is dairy goats. We went from 58 to 168 dairy goats this year. That's what, that's where our big increase is. The rest of everything else is uh, cattle are about the same, uh, sheep, uh, swine. Everything else is pretty much the same. We had a big increase in dairy goats this year, which is Goat good. cheese. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you all very much. I Do you want to y'all like to add anything or say anything? I'd love to add something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a future politician here. <laughs> uh, like it was said earlier, I'm Pat Maynard. I'm a uh, senior. I'm in 4-H. I've participated in Teacher JLS for many a year, and I've been a assistant in 4-H. I'm sorry, in Teacher JLS for a long time, and it has helped me with my leadership, with my servant leadership that I have learned and that has driven me to the field of interest that I think I'm going to research in colleges of politics. Um, surprise, <laughs> surprise. And acting, which are the same thing. Um, we could run you for district clerk in a couple of years. <laughs> That's what I'm here. No, but uh, in all honesty, thank you all so much. It, it means so much to me, so I know that it means everything to everyone that participates, and just thank you all so much. Thank you. What 4-H club do you belong to? Uh, Lake Country Christian. Well, Lake Country 4-H. All right. That'd thank be you. out in your area, wouldn't it? It would be in my area. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, we're, County Judge pays more. but now we're coming to Mansfield. Matt? Yes, sir. Um, that's kind of hard to follow. I don't think people laugh like that, but on the <laughs> well, they laugh up here regularly. It's, when we've got Wilder to point at, it, it's always a laughable. Um, <laughs> I do show Longhorns, and even though we don't make sell or um, anything at the Tarrant County Junior Livestock Show, I do help with showing chickens and seeing all of my friends scramble to get their projects together and make them look the best and do their best this weekend. I just want to thank everybody who. Uh, puts their time and effort into it to make it the best show possible because this is making kids' dreams come true and setting them up for a really bright future, and I don't think you can give a kid anything better. So thank, thank you. you. How many longhorns do you have? Uh, personally, I have two, but our chapter has over 40 show longhorns. And they you're from? Mansfield FFA. Great. That is Just fantastic. wanted to point that out to Mr. Wynn. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate y'all being here. Thank, thank you. you. And I am grooming Patton for the for for the next uh, presidential job, so I can retire. So. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Commissioner Johnson. Again, we thank you for everything you do. I think it's been a passion of yours. I, I, I enjoy know every minute of it. Well, we, it's been a passion, and I know the kids uh, 
the kids are the ones that really benefit from that, and we, we appreciate your dedication to that. Now is the time for our uh, employee recognition, and this is a, a, a great time of the month. We have some, uh, some, we have just fantastic employees, and this month especially, uh, we're going to recognize uh, the longest serving Tarrant County employee uh, at this point in time, and, and probably will be for, I think, a lot longer. I hope a lot longer. But I'm going to start for you rookies, for you five-year folks, when, I, when you hear your name called, or what sounds like your name, or where you think you are in the alphabet, <laughs> you are to stand. And just remain standing until we finish that group, uh, that particular group, and then we'll um, recognize you as a group and thank you. Uh, uh, and then you can sit down as we move to the next group. So we're going to start with the five-year employees. And the first one is Corey Balderas, 48th District Court. Roxy Biggio, Public Health. Nancy Box, Tax Office. Cecilia Frazier, Criminal Court Support. Sheena Hargrove, Public Health. Lisa McCamey, is it? Muck, Muck, yeah, that's good. I'm glad you could say that. <laughs> County Administrator's Office. Uh, Michael Pollard, Medical Examiner. I didn't want to jinx it because I thought we were going to have all the five-year employees here. Brenda Ramirez, Public Health. Timothy Randall, Sheriff's Office. Yeah, we started off strong. <laughs> Cynthia Rodriguez, Public Health. There you go. And Mark Thornhill, Criminal District Attorney's Office. Thank you all very, very much for your time. Here. Now for our 10-year employees, Don Boring, Information Technology, Mary Castro, Sheriff's Office, Nicholas Downs, Sheriff's Office, Barry Hancock, Sheriff's Office, Pamela Jenkins, Tax Office, Geneva Genevieve, Long, Public what, Health. What over here? <laughs> yeah. Fabian Lopez, Public Health. Stephanie Rhodes Reese, District Clerk's Office. Bruce Shelby, Sheriff's Office. Galen Spence, Sheriff's Office. Tashika, I know I didn't get that one right. Stafford, Public Health. Okay, you get to tell me how I missed it. Walter Turnbow, Criminal Court Support. Daniel Valesquez, Juvenile Services. Horatio White, Sheriff's Office. These are our tenure employees. Thank you all very much. Now for our 15-year employees, Winnie Connor, Sheriff's Office. Michael Falcon, Falcone, Information Technology. Monty Favre. Favre. We're going to rotate these pronunciations, <laughs> at least until we get down to the 25 years. Information Technology. Rebecca Grassy Peterson, Public Health. Clarence Haynes, Sheriff's Office. Celeste Hightower, Sheriff's Office. James Horton, Sheriff's Office. <coughs> Paula McNeely, Public Health. Ernest Miles, Sheriff's Office. John Nicholson, County Clerk's Office. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Mike Simon, Simmons, Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Melissa Taylor, Sheriff's Office. These are our 15-year employees. <laughs> 
20-year employees. Amy Candler, Domestic Relations Office. Charles Gilbreth, Transportation Services. Edward Gordon, Criminal District Attorney's Office. There you go. Annie Hinojosa, Human Services. Roberta Jackson, District Clerk's Office. Lisa Kissel, <coughs> Juvenile Services. William Yabera, Ibera, District Clerk's Office. Sorry about that. And these are our 20-year employees. Now for our 25 plus, our first is Annette Gutierrez, District Clerk's Office. Now she's actually been here 28 years. She's one of those that came, left for three years to raise her son, and then came back. Uh, she started out in the old uh, courthouse in the records management area, then went over to uh, the Justice Center, uh, worked as a front clerk, as a front counter clerk in the district clerk's office for a while, then went to work uh, for Judge Stearns as, a, as an office clerk, and is now in the 297th uh, court as the lead clerk with Judge Hagerman. Um, when I asked her about her memorable moments, she unfortunately was there for both of the shootings. She said, I remember the first shooting. She said, I actually uh, knew the clerk who was killed in that particular shooting and then was also there when uh, uh, the other shooting occurred. When I asked her what she liked most, she said it was the friendships she'd had a chance to make over the years, uh, the closeness of the folks that she'd had a, not only an opportuni opportunity to work with, but also just the folks that came into the office and just um, constantly the comments that she would get about how friendly folks were here in Tarrant County from some of those attorneys who had to come here from the east and then they realized, golly, they really wish they were in the west and they weren't in the east. <laughs> um, when I asked her, uh, you know, what else that she would like to have mentioned, she says, you know, I really look forward to uh, spending more time with my grandchildren. She said, I haven't really selected that date of retirement yet, but she said, I know that uh, uh, I've got grandkids and, and it's been a, it, it, they're wonderful to be around. Uh, as I said, she's actually been with the county for 28 years. Uh, when her son was younger, she uh, took three years off and, and we certainly understand that. And Annette, we appreciate very, very much the, the time that you've given to Tarrant County. Thank you. Now this next one's tough to pronounce. Mark Mendez. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, we know what he's doing now. Uh, you know, it was strange because when I opened up his particular sheet to, uh, to do, most of these folks I've had a chance to interview in the past. And so I'm kind of looking back at old notes and then adding things to it as, as things have changed over the last five years. Well, his was blank. And that's primarily because every time in the past that, that it's come up, He's been down at the legislature, <clears throat> so we hadn't had a chance to talk. Um, didn't realize it, but when he actually started out with the county, uh, he started out uh, in GK's office with uh, economic development area. Um, and then he had an opportunity to get out of there, and he took it quickly and left for the, uh, and left for the transportation department to work for JD's best friend, Don McChesney. Um, and he worked over there for a while. A dandy. Yep. Uh, then uh, he came back to GK's office for the legislative affairs, uh, thought he was only going to be there for a brief period of time and ended up being there for a lot longer. And we're glad for that. Um, memorable moments, he said, again, uh, as so often people mention, it's the courthouse shooting. He said, you know, I remember being in the office and I remember seeing GK jump and, and just run out of the office and I remember looking over and seeing people just pouring out of the old courthouse. He said, I was also working late the night that the tornado hit. And I remember, he said, I remember driving out of downtown and looking in my rear view mirror and, and seeing the tornado as it kind of came in and engulfed uh, one of the buildings. Um, the other thing he remembers, which I was a little bit of a part of, is that one time when we were trying to uh, at least get a few amendments made to a bill for indigent defense, which 
is something that I had an opportunity to, to serve on. Uh, Senator Ellis called myself and uh, John Dayhill and Don Lee to his office for a little briefing. It was a one-way briefing. Uh, and I think Mark was able to sit back on the periphery of that and watch that happen. Not that it was completely, it was certainly not enjoyable to me, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was one of those things to remember. Um, when I asked him what he liked most, it was, again, the relationships uh, which he'd had a chance to, to build over the years. And not only that, but also being in Austin so often and, and having an opportunity to see how a lot of the other counties work in the state. He said, it really makes me proud to be from Tarrant County because I do think we're leaders in so many different areas um, and, and very committed to public <coughs> service. Um, he said he's, you know, he's had a chance to work with some great people. Uh, and again, he has been very appreciative of his opportunity to, to work down at the sausage mill in Austin and see things as, as they're developed. Did he mention the golf courses in Austin? <laughs> no, I didn't really get into that. I just, you know, I, I thought that, I know he's played them all. You, um, either that or he's in some sunny room there in the Capitol because he sure does have a tan. Well, he does have that. Now that you say that, I just, you know. <laughs> Almost as much. He doesn't have, he has a little bit more than his boss, but you know, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> he also has, his hair is a little bit grayer than, but he doesn't have much more than his boss does at that, at least at that point in time. So. I, I did pay my money to the junior <laughs> I think I have a check. For before, you. before we get too far aside, let me, uh, Mark, just again, thank you for your 25 years of Tarrant County. find them and my yellow pad no your yellow pad won't have anything on there that I need <laughs> next is lieutenant Jason Willingham uh, from the courts area, there he is. Uh, started out in the Cold Springs uh, jail area, then went to the Correction Center, has worked in patrol, uh, uh, actually has done quite a bit of training. Um, last time we had talked, he was in the Justice Center, but now uh, he is at Lon Evans and has been there since June. Uh, when I ask him about memorable moments, it, it kind of goes back to, I think, probably some of the time in his patrol. He said, I have really enjoyed helping people um, when they were in need of trouble, especially within the family violence area. Uh, he said, I've enjoyed training and the supervisors that I've had. Uh, what I asked him what he likes most, he, he indicated it was the opportunities that he'd been given, uh, the opportunity to help in training, uh, the progressive way that we do things here in the county. Um, he said each place he's worked has had some special memories for him and that it's really a close family uh, and it's been, you know, given it's a large number of employees, but it's, it is a very large family. Um, as I said, he made, he's lieutenant now, he made lieutenant in March of 2012. Uh, he said, I just enjoy the job that I have, the job that we get to do and the relationships that I've been able to build over that time frame. Uh, Lieutenant, we want to thank you very much for the 25 years of service you've given us. <laughs> Next is Nancy Griggs. 30 years. She has brought with her her JPs, the ones that I, that I think that she's trained. <laughs> And we appreciate both of y'all being here today to help celebrate Nancy and the 30 years of service she's given. She started out uh, with Judge Forbes uh, as JP and is now and has been the court manager since 1997. Um, she, when I asked her about her memorable moments, uh, 
uh, five years ago, uh, she said it was when Judge Davis took office. And she just could not have, she said, I didn't think I could find a better JP than Judge Davis, but she said, the, the one I've got now is pretty good too. <laughs> uh, job security, she loves, uh, she said, I've really loved watching my kids grow up uh, as I've worked here at Tarrant County. Um, she said, what I like most, one of the things she liked most was seeing her daughter come to work for the county in the tax department. Um, obviously, since last we talked, she has a new judge. Uh, she has 11 grandkids, the youngest is seven, and a couple of them are graduating this year. Uh, I asked her if they were all in the area. She says, you know, we get together every Sunday for lunch, so I have an opportunity to, to see them. Nancy, thank you very, very much for the 30 years of service. Next, next is uh, Nancy Hawkins, 30 years with uh, criminal court, county criminal court number eight. Did she, was she able to make, she wasn't sure uh, there was supposed to be a, uh, uh, a trial start today and she wasn't sure she was going to be able to uh, get that postponed a little bit or not. So apparently she wasn't. So when you see Nancy, please thank her for her 30 years of service uh, for Tarrant County. Next is uh, Julia Kelly with the tax office, 30 years. I uh, started out in the Lake Worth office, uh, worked downtown and um, or wherever they needed her. She's currently working uh, vehicle registration tiles and property taxes at the Southwest uh, sub. Um, Memorable moments were just the states constantly changing things. You know, just about the time you think you got it to where it's working, then they decide to change it so it's not. Um, computerization has been great. She really enjoys, uh, she really loves the opportunities that she's had at the tax office, enjoys working with people. And like I think so many of the employees that we have here in Tarrant County, she says, I love interacting with the public. And that's what we hear over and over again is how friendly all of our folks are. And I think they learned that by watching the people who were here when they came here. Uh, so Julia, you've obviously been a big part of that. Um, she has two new grandbabies. Um, and she said she looks forward to going to the races. She loves the, the stock car races and going to be going to TMS before long. So, Julie, again, thank you very much for the 30 years of service you've given us. <laughs> Next is Mike Warren, Juvenile Services. 35 years. Now, folks, we got one after him. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because as I look at these each month, what I find, and I, I, we talked about this with Mike and then also with Sandra, is that the, that the folks with the longest longevity a lot of times are coming out of the juvenile services. And I really believe in talking with both of them, it's because they, are, they have such a passion for our children, for our kids, for our teenagers, and for trying to see the best in them and to convince them that that good is within them and trying to bring that out. Uh, Mike has spent all his time in juvenile services. He's currently one of the community service officers. When I asked him again what he liked best, it was the stability, the flexibility, the willingness of the department and of the, of the directors that he's had over the years and he's had a chance to work with over the years to listen to new ideas and new ways of doing things. Um, he indicated, like I think so many, that you know, didn't expect maybe to be here that long. Time just flew by. Uh, but he said it's a great place to work and when you're enjoying what you're doing, then it is truly a great place to work. As a granddaughter, um, he has been working quite a bit lately at the alternative school at Lena Pope. Uh, 
and that role has really been expanding. Uh, just some interesting things about what he does. He's a master gardener. And so at the Lena Popone, he helps with the garden that they have out there. They also call him the field trip guy <laughs> because he arranges field trips to museums, to water treatment plants. He, he helps them with service projects. I think what the conversation that we had regarding this is, is that remember this is an alternative school. So these folks didn't petition to go to this school. Um, and I think what he's able to do is to really sh to show them that there is other parts of the society, that they can be a part of that, and that just because they're in an alternative school doesn't mean that they don't get to experience some of the same things that the other students are. And I, again, just <coughs> pointing out that they're important, pointing out that, that there's good in them and that they need to recognize that and, and try to find it. Um, <coughs> Mike, we just very, very much appreciate the 35 years you've given us. Thank you. A couple of months ago, Craig Maxwell came to me and just said, you know, you've got some employees coming up uh, that have been with the county longer than anybody else. And today, to the best of my knowledge, we have the employee who has been with the county the longest. Sandra Williams, Juvenile Services, 45 years. sit down yet. <laughs> Stand back up. Sandra started in the detention area before the center opened on March 1st, 1971. Uh, at that time, she was taking girls from the county jail to the center. She's been in field service for over 30 years and had been carrying a caseload of anywhere between 20 and 35 cases at a time. <laughs> I asked her how that was going now, and she says, well, it's, it's calmed down a little bit. And she says, now I'm working about 20 cases, which she said is much better because I have more time to spend with these kids in an effort to try to get them on the right track. Uh, memorable moments, she said, uh, I'll be someplace, and the kids will come, and they'll say, uh, we're doing good, we're doing good, and we're doing good because of things that you helped me learn to do. She said, I love the kids, I love my coworkers. She says, I just love what I'm doing. And she said, that's the, you know, I said, I, I don't, I said, I don't want to, to, to in any way encourage you to even think about retirement, but she's probably making less money here than what she would make if she had retired. But she loves it. She said, I love coming in here. She said, I, I just, I can't imagine not doing what I'm doing. She has a, uh, one daughter who's not married. Uh, she's been on a couple of cruises. And she said, I kind of like these cruises. Uh, but she said, I still enjoy what I'm doing. And I just absolutely love the people that I've had a chance to work with. Sandra, come on up here because we're going to present you with your pen. <laughs> Your Honor, 
Now, before you wrap this up, I'd like to recognize the presence of Tarrant County Juvenile Services employee, who I'm sure is here to support his colleagues this morning, but he's also the president of the Fort Worth Independent School District Board of Trustees. And always and everywhere, he is both a Tarrant County employee and the president of the school board, Mr. Jacinto Ramos. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Jacinto, we are very glad to have you here today. We do very much appreciate everything you do for all of the, uh, the children and kids in the Fort Worth ISD and for all the time that you spend. I mean, you spend it, you know, it, I won't even say it ours, you spend a lot of time with the juvenile services area and then you go and, and I'm sure many evenings spend a lot of time uh, discussing this at that point. 760 years, when you think that 5% of that, over 5% of that was with one person. <laughs> That's the CPA in it. <laughs> you just can't take the bean counter out of the box. <laughs> but it is pretty miraculous. And again, what I want to say to the ones who've been here years before is the, ones, is the same thing I want to say to the ones who were recognized for five years. People are watching you. You're setting an example. What better example than ones who are so passionate about the service that they give to our public and the service that they give to other employees within the county? We can't thank you enough for that. Um, just keep up the great work that you're doing right now, and we appreciate you very much. Refreshments, 504C. Tom is still here. So there may be hope. Think there's any left. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. One last thing, if you haven't voted, be sure and get out and vote.
Motion. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Please vote. The motion passes unanimously. I'd also move that we uh, receive and file the uh, employee recognition. Second. Please vote. The motion passes unanimously. Mr. Maynard. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, we have one additional item to bring to you this morning. We're requesting that the Commissioner's Court approve interim financing for the anticipated FY1617 Texas Department of State Health Services, Ryan White Park B grant contract renewal. Move approval. Second. Move approval. Second. No, we've already got all that. I just I'm just anticipating the amount of signatures. There won't be a lot today because we're just postponing it, right? Or just providing interim financing. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Forever. One of these days we're gonna get that worked out again. Ms. Temple. We have two items we're asking the court to consider this morning. The first is to uh, receive and file the Tarrant County Quarterly Investment Report for the period into December 31st, 2015. Move approval. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And the other item is asking the court to receive and file the Tarrant County financial statements for the period also ended December of 2015. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Schneider. Bruce Management Board is recommend the payment of a claim to Bruce Hardy Jr. in the amount of one thousand oh forty one fourteen. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Move to receive and file personnel agenda. Second. second. We have a motion to second to receive and file personnel agenda. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank good, you. Good morning, Ms. Glenn. <laughs> Chris. Good morning, Your Honor, members of the court. We have one item for your consideration. Uh, it is requested that the Commissioner's Court approve the um, joint resolution which amends uh, the 800 megahertz radio maintenance agreement between uh, Tarrant County and uh, City of North Richland Hills by extending that agreement through September of this year. This is a routine uh, request uh, 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 at this time. We've been in this agreement for the last 22 years and it served us right. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Benny. Good morning, Your Honor, members of the court. Good morning. Uh, we have two items before you for approval today. Uh, first item is, is the approval of interim financing for FY15 for the DSHS uh, Breast and Cervical uh, Cancer Grant Extension um, uh, to the contract to Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the second item uh, is again an interim uh, financing request, but this is the second request for the state women, infants, and children grant contract renewal, taking a little bit more than uh, uh, more time than anticipated. Uh, this request is for two million dollars, uh, but we expect to receive the contract here shortly. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Beecham. We have three items for consideration this morning. Our first item is a bid award recommendation for bid 2016-046, saying a contract for fitness classes and personal trainer sessions. Uh, recommendation be to warn a pre-enterprise basis, running the YMCA of Metropolitan Four. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Second item is also a bid award recommendation for bid 2016-064. This is a contract for the purchase of retirement watches. Recommendation be toward a pre-enterprise basis. Selection is our primary vendor, J. Brandt Recognition. Our secondary vendor, Worldwide Specialty Advertising. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? These are not Rolexes, are they? <laughs> no. Sir. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Last time, number three is also a bid award recommendation for bid 2016-078. Uh, 
bid for the sale of recycled paper. Recommendation be toward the high bidder on free enterprise basis, awarding the office paper to Evergreen Fire Sales at the rate of $130 per ton, and uh, Pinnacle Recycling for cardboard at $95 per ton. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion, second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Skinner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. requesting the court's approval of an interlocal agreement with the Crowley Independent School District related to the extension of McCart Street. This project will be funded with uh, Precinct 1 discretionary bond funds. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Commissioner Wynn. I move for the approval of the interlocal agreements as listed on item 8 and 1A and B. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Commissioner Fickers. Yeah, I move approval of uh, ADN 2A and B, interlocal with the city of Bedford. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And Commissioner Johnson. Move approval of item 8 and Three A, B, C, and D. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Are there any appointments? Yes, Your Honor. To the Tarrant County Human Services Committee, I would like to, I believe these are reappointments for the term uh, 2016 to 2018, June Davis. Uh, Daniel Clark, uh, Carolyn Henry, Connie Nahuliwa. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Rona Huckabee, Patrick Johnson, and Sylvia Rosales. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any bonds today, I don't believe. No, we do not. Okay. You have before you the claims, including the addendum. Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Briefing items, Mr. Mayes. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the Court, we have one item we'd like to bring to you this morning. It concerns the Health Department's uh, Medicaid 1115 waiver program. Uh, Mr. Clark is here to address the court at this time. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, brief you on the 1115 waiver, sort of catch you up to speed on where we've been and sort of where we're going over the next couple of years. Uh, as you may recall, this waiver started about five years ago, and uh, the intent was to create an opportunity to uh, focus on our Medicaid, our underinsured, our under, under, uninsured population here in the county and create transformational type products for, uh, for health care delivery. And that could be in the form of education and outreach, expansion of service, et cetera. Today I'd like to just briefly retrace those early steps and talk about a few of our projects and then move into sort of the middle years where we are now in the midst of this transition and then what it looks like tomorrow. Back four years ago or so, we, we applied to participate in this uh, transformation waiver, and we did so via nine different projects that were approved over a two-year cycle. And do you recall these from the previous um, uh, briefings that I've gone over? But real quick, our tobacco cessation program, all of these are primarily targeted for Tarrant County, uh, the attempt to reduce, reduce tobacco use within our county. Antenatal steroids is to reduce preterm birth. We have a chronic disease uh, self-management program, which is intended to reach out to our community members that are suffering from chronic disease and to educate them and work with them on better methods and better management techniques. Our TB projects, we have two of those. Both of them are specifically focused on improving uh, completion rates for medication that's used for our latent tuberculosis uh, individuals. 
And one of them is an expansion, just increasing access, and then the other one is using a, a, a different treatment methodology uh, to improve those rates. We have two STD programs, uh, our PRIDE program and our STD clinic expansion. Both of these programs are located in Arlington, although we do have a PRIDE program that's outside of Arlington, our Fort Worth areas and some surrounding areas. But specifically for DISRIP, this project is focused on uh, youth counseling and education, outreach to our youth to educate them on sexually transmitted diseases. And the STD clinic is again access, it's about improving access to the services uh, to those uh, individuals in our Arlington area. Our health information exchange, this is a tool that we are still currently building and working on, uh, creating a two-way data flow between uh, the health department and other providers within the county, whether it be hospitals, physicians' offices, et cetera, or even other health information exchange uh, exchanges. Uh, the idea here is to be able to exchange these notifiable conditions so we can get early warning sounds of things that might be happening in our communities in a certain location or zip code or area. Um, because it's a very large undertaking, we focused on just one disease process right now, and then we can scale that as we move on, and that was pertussis. So we're moving into our fifth year of that project. And then lastly, our false prevention, that was our, uh, our newest project. This is uh, aimed towards our 60 um, plus age population in Tarrant County, and the intent is to educate, treat them on improving activity, improving mobility, and teaching them to manage their falls. So all nine of these projects are now moving into the final year of the initial transformation waiver period, which is year five. This timeline here, uh, you can look at uh, the, the red I listed items along sort of the top middle of the page. That's the timeline between April of 13 and May of 14 that we had all nine approved. And then along the bottom, you'll see that uh, the payment structure revenue that was generated based upon uh, the semi-annual reporting requirements. The first payment, the 2.4 million, indicates infrastructure and startup um, <clears throat> funding. So this was all of the funding that was packaged for all nine of our projects uh, to start hiring folks and start getting things going, purchasing, training material, et cetera. So that one was not really tied to a milestone. But all of the milestones since then, have all been tied, uh, tied specifically to some type of deliverable, whether it be enrolling someone in your program, whether it is um, uh, working and case managing um, uh, uh, one of the ladies in our um, in Tarrant County and getting them to start certain medications for preterm birth, um, et cetera. You can see that the that it rolls out every six months, with the exception of that first one, um, the first payment in 11, 18, 13. These move every six months, so we'll repeat them um, cyclical like that. And then you can see our last payment that we just received approximately a month ago, uh, a $7.7 .7 million payout for the milestones. This graph here shows you cylinders that represent each one of our projects. Uh, obviously, you can see that one in the middle, which is a, a, a very highly valued project, higher, double most of the others. The blue cylinder, again, indicates that initial startup. All the red cylinders indicate achievement. So this is achieved and paid to date. The green is the estimated achievement that we look to hit in April, uh, which will pay out in July. So that, that equals about $4 million. And then the opportunity is in the, the rest of the cylinders, the clear cylinders. Now keep in mind, the project does have, DY5 does end September 30th of 2016. But because of the late implementation of the projects throughout the state, over 1,400 projects throughout the state, <coughs> they've granted a year carry for it so we can actually capture some of these and get caught up. With rules, of course, but um, it does give us opportunity to, to capture a little bit more time. This pie chart here packages all those cylinders, puts them together nicely, so you can see the blue, sil or the blue slice and the red slice is what we've captured to date. So you add those up and that equals the, uh, the 32 million that's down there at the bottom of the page. So that's total program potential 57 million minus our IGT, which is about 37, per or I'm sorry, 43 percent, uh, and that's the price of uh, participating in the program. 
at least 32 million. <clears throat> and uh, program earned today, I'm, I'm sorry, that's the 31 million at the bottom, program earned today. You subtract the IGT from that and minus expenses, it gives us approximate program revenue at this point of 12 million. So financials through the end of fiscal year, we carried forward 7.7 .7 million. Uh, we added in another approximate 12 million. You minus those expenses and it leaves us at the 8.8 .8 million at the, uh, the end of fiscal year. Challenges and next steps. So again, we're moving into this last year. So the last year the state was chan um, charged with providing a transition plan. So how do we move into this district 2.0, if you will, the next steps? And uh, so in September of 15, there was an ask sent to uh, CMS to help us determine uh, what was going to be in the future. The request was for five more years. And um, because, again, this statewide uh, initiative was so massive and there's so many different projects, uh, CMS came back and said, what we're going to do is we're going to give you, give the state a transition year, one year. And then that transition year, we're just really going to duplicate your demonstration year five, so your last year of your waiver. So all the things that you had to do then, you're going to have to do them again. And of course, that's not duplicating, it would be enrolling more people. So if you had to enroll more people in D, or 100 people in DY5, you'll have to enroll 100 more people in DY6. Uh, and that applies, of course, across all projects, whether it be education, whether it be treatment, whether it be reducing uh, the cost of illness, et cetera. So really that's to buy some time so they can more adequately identify how we're gonna move into the next one to five years. Um, you can see there the current ends no, uh, September 30th of this year, one year transition in the renewal. Word should come in sometime this summer and uh, it could be anywhere from one to five years. So uh, we're just hanging on and waiting. All of our projects right now have been given the green light to move forward. Um, our funding valuation is gonna be based upon our demonstration year five funding valuation, and all of that holds solid also. So there's been no reductions, no changes. Um, there will be an opportunity for us to adjust our projects. As we've seen, um, when we built these projects five years ago, uh, some of the milestones were stretches, so they were very, very hard to achieve and we burnt through a lot of time. So there's gonna be an opportunity to sort of re-zero, if you will, and help create uh, some milestones and deliverables that are definitely in a, a good probability of capture. Uh, and again, that will be coming later on this summer. Our milestone deadlines, uh, you, remind, you might remember me sitting up here talking to you last year and telling you we had four milestones that we had to deliver. If we didn't deliver those milestones, we would forfeit funding. Well, um, the, thank goodness the, the, the associate directors, the project managers and their teams uh, really pulled together and was able to deliver those milestones like, yeah, last year. The unfortunate part, of course, all of these are domino effects into the next year, so we have four more that we're up against this year. So, um, uh, again, it's a little bit going to be harder this year to deliver on those milestones because, you know, our, our, our gap is, is, is narrowing. Um, but we have those four out of the 105 milestones that uh, we're looking at hitting this October. Uh, of course, in addition to the others that are normally scheduled. Our milestone completion, uh, again, it will continue cyclically uh, every April and October. No change there. So the good stuff here, the project achievements to date, you can see as we first started capturing data back February of 14, and then now, this, and this is cumulative, um, through October of 15, and, and that date's listed because that was the last time we reported official results out. Um, most of the infrastructure <laughs> that goes into these projects remains static. Uh, the project managers, the employees, the types of services. Um, but what's uh, very, very um, wonderful to see as an impact statement to our community is that number going from 838 up to over 16,000. That number represents, again, those individuals that have been personally affected, uh, processed, trained, educated, been um, brought into some of these programs. Um, the 200,000 on the bottom, we have one project, our cost of illness savings. We talked about how we're trying to create an early warning system within our technology 
to be able to intervene early in this pertussis um, um, infection cycle. And what we've seen over the last year of baselining it, we've been able to reduce that contact or that population impact by 200,000, a little over 200,000. What's really great about that number is that's one disease process. And we're in the midst of right now scaling that up to start capturing other diseases. Very promising there. All of this couldn't, well, a good majority of, uh, of this, uh, these initiatives would not be possible without the district money. And lastly, of course, our community partners. Uh, the, the name of the, game is of the game is collaboration, and it's working with our community partners. This is not all of them. This is a good uh, uh, collection of those. But these community partners have helped us bridge not only for the development delivery of this project, but also creating new relationships for other projects to where maybe two projects that seem unrelated can augment each other um, through maybe a third party. So we are very, very thankful for them. We couldn't do it without them. Our good project managers at, uh, at the health department. And uh, we really look forward to moving into this next round of, of district delivery. Thank you. Questions? I applaud you for hitting your milestones and doing such stellar work under the 1115 waiver program. My concern is about the PRIDE program, <clears throat> uh, which apparently has $3.8 million worth of funding in the city of Arlington. As you know, the PRIDE program started in Fort Worth, yes, and that program has gotten nowhere near $3.8 million worth of funding, nor has it been reported on to this court uh, in several years. I want to know what's going on with Pride Fort Worth, the original Pride program. Yes, sir. And uh, how are you funding it? Who are you serving? How many have you served? What kind of results have you gotten? Yes, sir. I will definitely go back to our Pride team and see if I can pull that information, and we'll get that report back out to you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Yes, Good report. Thank you. Your Honor, that's all we have. I believe we do have an audience participation. Yes. Um, you can come forward, please. You know the routine. <laughs> Laura Jenkins. 8101, North, 8101 Canyon Oak Drive, North Richmond Hills, Texas. I've come before you today to give you an update about what has happened <coughs> with my son. Anybody that doesn't know who I am and what I've talked about, it's about my son and, and all the details are at justiceforwardjunior.com. Uh, and January 1st marked the beginning of the 11th year. He's been in prison. Uh, he's been in prison for intoxication, manslaughter, and the 2004 death of grapevine police officer Darren Metlin. Our son was not drunk. He had epilepsy seizure. Uh, he's been up for parole for four times. He's up for, for parole again, and we're expecting to hear something in March, which is now. But since, uh, you know, we went through all the judicial process and we also went to the FBI for assistance and the FBI told us they couldn't find any violations, they couldn't find, um, our, our matter did not warrant an investigation and they did not, uh, FBI Dallas concurs with all this assessment because we specifically talked about the first officer who arrived at my son who had a tempered accident scene video and we specifically pointed out that the uh, ADA Richard Alpert had redirected the blood draw. So I went and spoke in front of the Texas Forensic Science Commission. I'm very proud to say that I have, after coming to you guys, I've learned, kind of learning what I can do. But that commission is the state commission, and Pirwani is the, uh, I guess, the chairperson. Richard Alpert is the DWI person on that commission. So I went down to Austin and I told that commission, which 
Richard Alford is right in front of me, and I'm telling him what I've told you all this time. I and because I was there, they told me I could file a complaint. I filed the complaint, and I'll be going back in April to uh, hear my complaint. The other thing that I've done is I did meet with an FBI person, and I am um, hoping to hear some good news about my son. But even if I don't, he's coming home on March in 2018, so we're working towards doing what we need to do to have a welcome for him. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. No other business? Not at this time. Then we'll recess our open meeting and proceed to close to discuss items exempted under 551.071072074076 and 087 of the Texas government. Having returned from our closed session, there being no business to conduct at this time, we are adjourned. Go vote, everybody.